following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good afternoon from TFNN. Welcome to the May 13th, the magical Monday edition of today's Trader's Edge show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes who absolutely knows that each of us should always be, and I do mean always be, pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. Let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. And, of course, the easiest way to do that is to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two-by-four shift, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Today, you and I, we're going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We're going to go figure out what the bulls and the bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I just past 1 o'clock in the afternoon. I want you to know that I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here. But more importantly, I'm here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone. You can dial on in right now, 877-927-6648. If you can't dial in, we've got you covered. Send in an email like the two Larrys did out here. Uh, just send it to Steve at TFNN.com as they did. Please put in your subject heading, radio show question. Of course, in our Tigers Den, any ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on Magical Monday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to La Show. All indices in the red. The Dow down about two and seven ten percent. That's seven hundred points, give or take. The S and P off seventy seven points. Nasdaq one hundred down two sixty seven. Spot volatility like some thirty two percent. That's up five dollars and ten cents. Twenty one fourteen. Gold up nearly thirteen bucks. Trading out at thirteen hundred. Even Stephen. Hey, thirteen hundred on Monday the thirteenth. I wonder if there's something to that. You've got lights. We crew down 85 cents trading at 60.82. Lead the charge to the upside dollar-wise. Suzuki Motor Corp up 6.65. That's a little over three and a half percent. What else can we find out here that is not an ETF? Beyond Meat. That's up three bucks. Not much other than that. To the downside, Amazon off 60 bucks. Booking Holdings 52. Mettler Toledo down 42. Google off 35. Lending Tree down 23. Some big movers and shakers out there. Now, the first two questions really, I can uh, I can knock off two birds with one stone. The first one coming in from Larry uh, in Wyoming. Larry says, Stevo, I say Laro. Uh, the 30 minute and less time frames on the ES. We look to be forming bottoms here. And now, your thoughts, please. We're going to combine that question with the question inside the Tiger's Den from uh, John in Philadelphia asking to confirm his Chapman Wave counts on the uh, ES Mini, the 30-minute time frame chart, and the 5-hour time frame chart. So where do we begin? Let's begin with the five-hour time frame chart first. Uh, and the five-hour time frame chart, we'll go take a look at the daily as well. So we'll try to cover everything for everyone out there as we take a look at the five-hour time frame chart with regard to Chapman wave counts. And what we're starting with is we're starting right out here, uh, this bar, little doji candle, 4 o'clock in the morning. This is on the trading session of May Day, May the 1st out there. Since that time frame, that puts us in wave number Number seven. That would be good old letter G on my screen out here. Now, interesting, just as prices move down to this seventh wave out here, it's gotten down to its second TD support line. The first one was this red line out here, but that was passed through back at about 11 o'clock in the evening. That was back on May the 5th. The second one comes all the way down here. This is to the trading session at 2 o'clock in the afternoon on March 28th. So support is being hit on a five-hour time frame basis 
along with wave number seven. Now, this wave is not going to be confirmed until the end of today's close. It may not be confirmed then. In other words, if there's a lower low after two o'clock, that's when this candle session completes, then you could not get wave number seven to confirm until uh, 11 o'clock this evening out there. But those are what I have. That's what I have with regard to the counts. That's the only potential, I do say potential, bottoming signal. Again, continued lower lows between 2 o'clock and 5, then between 6 and 11, and then 11 and 4. You won't get a confirmed seventh wave move. But of interest out there is it is testing a level of support as we speak. So then the question is, well, if the ES mini on a five-hour time frame is at support, What's it doing on the 30-minute time frame out there? So on the 30-minute time frame, let's go take a look at its uh, Chapman wave counts out here. And for here, for those wave counts, I'm starting at this bar right here. It's a good bar. They serve great gin and tonics. Not that I uh, drink a gin and tonic, but it's still a great bar. If we take a look at it, it's the bar from 1530 on May the 10th. That's the high. We start doing our counts to the downside. We're in wave number seven. It could be a bottom, you know, but we, you and I, we like to, we like to see the market singing in a key of G out there. We don't have that. Um, but between now and two o'clock, uh, this could easily on a 30 minute basis make a higher low. So that gets to confirm number count number six and then go on and make a lower low by 2 p.m. and then uh, get it in line with uh, the uh, wave counts on that five-hour time frame chart. But Larry, are you asking me, do I see a bottom signal here the, on a 30-minute time frame? The answer is no. No whatsoever. And no Rhodes Momentum indicator bottom in sight for many hours from now should one occur. So there's your 30-minute chart. There's your Five-hour chart, that was 30 minutes, was for John and Larry. The five-hour, uh, specifically just for John, I'm just kidding. It was for everybody that's out there. But as long as we're inside the ES Mini out here, we ought to go take a look at what's going on on the daily. And I'd say the weekly time frame as well, even though the week just began. If we take a look at the uh, daily time frame, interestingly enough, just as the five-hour is approaching a level of support. It's Tom DeMarc set up trend support line out here. So too is the ES Mini. We're trading below double hammer candles out there. So we know the bulls were trying to do everything they possibly could to form a bottom. As of 113, it's not looking promising, but the day is not over. When you're on a daily time frame chart, you've got to stay within the daily time frame. I can't project because I don't really see the bottoming signal in the short-term time frame chart just yet. Uh, yes, maybe in the five-hour time frame, but no confirmation there. This says support, and this would be a level to be watching out here, is the uh, low of uh, 2795. 2795, that's the low of the trading session from March the 20. Eighth. That's key. It's really key. Why? Because if price closes below that, you'll know another level of support has been broken through. With regard to market profiles, Jose and uh, whoever else was asking the question, if anyone else was, there are no new market profiles. But what does that mean, Jelly Bean? It means we come back from this break just to complete things. We'll go take a look at the daily, the weekly, the monthly, and the quarterly ES Mini market profiles. We'll do get their message of the markets. Just a few minutes. Stay with us, folks. The Taz Profile Scanner is the most revolutionary piece of trading software that you will ever try. Wouldn't you like to approach the markets with confidence? As you begin your trading day, it's likely that you'll be faced with lots of decisions. In order to make the best decision, the first thing you'll need is a strategy that will help you minimize your risks. Whether we're in a bull or bear market, a good strategy is to have the tools needed to help you scan and analyze the markets before you trade. 
The TAS Profile Scanner instantly scans and filters over 2,500 global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, president of TAS Market Profile, the TAS Profile Scanner understands that in today's technological world, the use of top flight software applications, automated trading algorithms, and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. Whether you're looking at the trade matrix, the ETF heat grid, the market breadth, the landscape charts, or the many other features of the TAS Profile Scanner, this is a piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the markets and set up your trades. The team at TAS has even put together a 12-part video series to walk you through every aspect of the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find directly on the TAS order page at TFNN.com. Sign up now for only $97 a month with a risk-free 30-day trial so you have nothing to lose and everything to gain. See for yourself how you can harness the full power of the TAS Profile Scanner by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services section. Remember, with a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to lose. Don't let another day pass you by without trying out this amazing piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the market and how you place trades. Sign up today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call, call, call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, uh, folks. So we're taking a look at the ES Mini and its uh, TAS market profiles, and we've got four different time frames. Right now, I've just uh, enlarged the screen, so we're just taking a look at the daily time frame charts. What you're going to notice here, and coming off of the bottom back on December the uh, 26th, is that you never saw a break, a close below the bottom of a new TAS market profile. That was until the trading session of May 7th. There was a close just below it. The following trading session, there was a, a test of that level. Old support became resistance. It basically indicated a change in trend. We now see that change in trend the way that it played out on Friday. The uh, strong move to the upside to fight off that bottom ran right into resistance again at the bottom of that daily profile. There is no new profile that is formed. As I mentioned, I've got my super duper super Doppler tools out here that would catch an early signal. And, that, and as I can say, as of 1.19 in the afternoon, no such profile exists. What we also know as we begin the week is that we are now down below the bottom of the weekly profile, 28.92. When one profile fails on its time frame and until a new profile for that time frame shows up then we go to the next time frame higher at least that's what stevie does and then we would take us to the weekly i'm sorry the monthly that's in the lower left hand panel one of the things that you know about the monthly is a bearish structured box it suggests right now as of may 13th that the close above the top of that box which was 2892 was a false break to the upside and because it's a bearish structured box Price is pushing on its monthly point of control. That number is 2828. We're 2803. This says that sellers on a monthly basis should be able to take hold of the market. And if they do, where they're going to push price is perhaps down to the bottom of that box at 2575. The clear picture is just simply getting rid of all the noise and looking at the quarterly time frame chart. That's in the very right hand panel. 
what is it that you see there? You see a consolidation. What's that consolidation at this stage here? Are the price levels, the 2886 area on the top and at the bottom, 2327. That level remains open. Of course, it's really one step at a time. But with regard to the story of the market profiles, as uh, my, uh, as Gus would say from my big fat Greek wedding, there you go. Now, we'll wait just for a moment here to see if the NQ will populate. It has, and we'll just take a look at it. It's got the daily, it's got the weekly, the monthly, and the quarterly. What do we know about the daily? Same syrup, same setup out here. Price is below the bottom of that profile. The weekly level is 73.96. We're trading at 73.24. Another level of support has been breached. It's not the end of the week. It's just the beginning of the week out here. That will be something we'll have to pay attention to come Friday. Right now, this would say on a monthly basis, price is targeting 7,200 or 7,199, the center of its monthly profile. We can see resistance on a quarterly basis has held that was the top of that box at 7505 out there so that's what we see when we take a look at profile land we could go take a look at it sure well, let's do it i know you didn't ask but let's just do it anyways let's go take a look at the dow equity futures contract out here i can't do it for the russell because the symbol changed and the e-signal didn't convert all the historical data to the new futures contract which is a real bummer it means i just simply can't give you the longer term profile information inside the dow the worst of them all at this stage with regard to breaking through the daily um, and where it's traveling right now it's trading below the weekly profile the number there to watch at the end of the week is 25395 it too has a bearish structured box but on a monthly basis there's a knocking at the door a brand new monthly profile formed now so to give us an idea of where on a monthly basis the dow is headed to is the bottom of that box the bottom of that box is 24249 out there that's basically about a thousand points below where we're trading right now that is where the target appears that's where price appears to be headed to now if we bring over the daily time frame chart for the dow equity futures contract and i'm not referring to some kind of intraday bounce and stuff like that that might take place here here if we take a look at the dow on a daily basis i've just put this blue line it's nothing more than a hammer candle from back here in march you know we like to say if you close below the low of a hammer candle if you're long you're wrong so what that says to you today is the number to watch today is 25 to 40 this should be a support area, which just simply means a close back above that level by day's end. Now, the even more interesting thing here, and Larry, I know you asked about the ES and John, you asked about the uh, ES as well, but uh, the five-hour time frame chart, perhaps a chart that is of most interest to us is the mere fact that it appears that today is going to be day number nine of the TD setup nine count out here. And what I do is I ask you to ask yourself this question. As the Dow Equity Futures contract made their high back here in the trading session of February 25th, and they were up in the 26275 level, what were traders thinking? What were they thinking when price got down to 25246? Well, those traders who were doing the uh, Tom DeMarc setup counts out there knew that on the trading session of March 11, after that hammer candle, you got bar number eight. And the question was, were you going to see a bar number nine, meaning that bar number eight could indeed have been the bottom? And the answer there was absolutely yes. That's what was out there. So now when we take a look at today's activity, today's activity in the Dow Equity Futures contract, and tomorrow's activity in the Dow Equity Futures contract are going to be more importante. Even if the Dow makes a lower low tomorrow, that just means tomorrow's bar would be bar, the bar that follows bar number nine, or otherwise known as bar number 10, which is where we know the markets can or instruments can form bottoms. So what it really means, it's either tomorrow or Wednesday that likely would give you the signal. So as bearish as the outlook is that I just provided you, so to speak, directionally speaking, with regard to where the markets are going, and first of all, and most of all, the most important thing to remember is the activity that we're seeing right now on an annual basis is normal. It is not the new normal. It's not the old normal. It's the normal of the last 130 years. What is that normal? that there's a 10% or more pullback on average at least once a year. Voila, 
I believe here we are when it comes to the Dow. And when I go back 130 years, it's only the Dow that I am looking at out there. So the Dow Equity Futures contract, perhaps more important, certainly as important as taking a look at the um, S&P uh, as we speak right now. Now, on a on a weekly basis, it doesn't look good. It, it looks it looks like it does not look good out there. What do you mean it doesn't look good? Well, if you take a look at price last week, close and below Stevie's red line, we were anticipating a test of that. Of course, it had tested that several times, giving you the bullish signal. Now we're in the additional pullback signal out here. I don't really have a level of support on the weekly basis to defer to when I take a look at this chart, nor when I take a look at the TAS profile charts out there. So the message is not great. Uh, but uh, we need to be paying attention to the daily time frame charts, I believe, at this stage of the game to generate our best signal information. So that is what's going on with the equity futures market. Let me take a quick peek at the email, see what other requests out there. There is uh, Larry number two which is Larry C. from Detroit. Larry C. from Detroit says, uh, give me your take on GBTC. So we'll do that. We get back from this breakout here. Steve Roach with TFN. Dow's off 689, SP 76. Goldie wants up $14.40. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12, six, and three months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of TFNN.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step by step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that we'll even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting tfnn.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com.
709 is what the Dow was down, the S&P down 79 points. So Larry writes in, uh, can you give me your take on GBTC? Do your indicators show any potential pullbacks, or does this still have room to run? I'm a long-term holder. would like to add on a hopefully large pullback, if any, my eventual target 3871. So GBTC is the uh, ETF. Let's just do this for you. We'll give you the quick rundown. Oops, that wasn't it. It was right here. Uh, it is the Grayscale Bitcoin Trust out there. What does that mean? What that means is if you go take a look at what this invests in or what it's supposed to invest in, it's supposed to be a similar to the GLD for gold, only this is the, uh, the uh, GBTC for Bitcoin. So the underlying instrument is Bitcoin. And, and Larry, we can give you my assessment on the ETF out here. But you know, and I know, and Dave Mason knows, that would be bogus. What do you mean? Well, because it's really trading off the underlying instrument. So we really would have to take a look at Bitcoin itself, which is somewhat complicated because I don't have a live index feed on my system. Just to show you the differences, though, out here, if we take a look at GB, so here, first, on a daily, on a weekly, on a monthly basis, prices above the top of all profiles. So this is not providing you with any kind of resistance levels out here to take a look at. On the weekly basis, it shows you the swing point that it's targeting, which is back in July of 2018, in the 11.15 to 12.36 level. You've got a gap to the upside today. Does this gap mean anything? Absolutely not. This is just catching up to Saturday and Sunday's trading inside of uh, Bitcoin out there. And if we take a look at the ETF, still stick with it, and you ask me for my indicators on it, I've got this in wave number seven, letter G or wave number four, the way that I do my counting. Now, when this formed a bottom out here, Rhodes Momentum Indicator Signal, on February the uh, 7th, a nice hammer candle there, and then price moving above Stevie's red line out there. But so what this says is, if there's going to be a pullback, it says be careful, because you could be in wave number seven, even though this thing has gapped to the upside. Today is going to be day number eight of the TD setup nine count. So this also says you could, could be nearing a top. But are we going to rely upon GBTC for that signal, Larry? Are we? No, I'm not going to do that for you. I'm just simply going to go switch over and take a look at what I can on the Bitcoin index itself. Oops, I grabbed the wrong thing out here. Let me get to the right thing. What I mean by that is just happens to be coincidentally on Saturday. No, it was yesterday, I think it was. I had actually downloaded for a friend of mine... Uh, Bitcoin charts. Here's the daily time frame chart for Bitcoin. On the daily basis out here, you're not going to see wave number seven. You're only going to see wave number C or B out here. And you're not going to see a TD set up uh, today being an eight count out here. We're only going to be in bar number four. So which one is it, my friend? Well, I'm going to say it's always the underlying instrument. It's not the Bitcoin trust ETF that you really should be making your trading decisions off. It really should be the underlying instrument out there. If I take a look at a weekly chart here, and so therefore on the daily basis, we have a completely different message than taking a look at the Bitcoin Trust ETF. What does this tell us when we look at the what the uh, weekly chart says? The weekly chart says price is headed towards its green horizontal line. It's line of demarcation that could indicate a change in trend. Well, what is that number out there? I'm going to share with you that number as soon as my screen helps me out here. 8881. You're at 7204. At 8881, perhaps that's where you see price run out of steam out there. The monthly time frame chart doesn't really provide me with a whole bunch. Now, we won't stop there because in truly trying to analyze what's going on inside GBTC, we also should take a look at how is Bitcoin trading in all the major currencies. And that's what this chart here shows. Well, kind of interesting. What you can see out here is these yellow lines on this chart were previous swing points. You can see that Bitcoin is moving higher in all major currencies, so everybody's in the mean green uh, Bitcoin machine out here. And price is above a prior swing point in a pretty decent way. So the answer to your question, it's not blowing in GBTC. It's blowing in the actual Bitcoin itself out there. I don't have today's pricing on Bitcoin because I don't get that flow through here.
But as of certainly yes, Saturday's date out there, looks like it wants to continue moving higher. So hope that helps you out with regard to what Stevie sees when he takes a look at GBTC. We have a request to go take a look at gold from uh, Peter in Park City. Peter, are you still skiing out there? I mean, we're getting sunburned out here. Of course, you're skiing out there getting pretty nice suntan, I'm sure. Probably in the same uh, bathing suit. Not the exact same bathing suit, but probably in a nice bathing suit out there. Um, you know, if ski, if you still can ski. I'm sure you can ski somewhere. Just need the helicopter to drop you off. But Peter wanted to know, yes, you're a snowbird. Okay. Hey, if we take a look at uh, if we take a look at uh, gold. Gold was the question out here. Now, this is kind of interesting with regard to Goldilocks. We take a look at gold. We put over the daily time frame chart out here. What are we going to see? We're going to see a clear break of that descending trend line. A clear break of that descending trend line. We're going to see that this morning price uh, did a little trampoline effect off of Stevie's red line. I mean to the T. And so it looks to me like gold, gold, gold is broken out at least in terms of U.S. dollars. It's taken out resistance out there. Does old resistance become new support on any kind of pullback? Perhaps out there. But the daily chart is looking really good. What's the weekly chart saying to you and I? Well, what it's saying to Stevie is the following. As soon as we open it up, it's saying, I'm taking out Stevie's green line. Now, we don't know, and that's at 1296.70 or 13.01. It's not like conviction, but if price does close above this level come Friday, Peter, that is a beautiful thing. It says more skiing is still in place. In this case, though, skiing upslope uh, to higher price out there. Now, when gold potentially formed its bottom out here, happened to be a time to mark set up nine count. It was the bar after bar number nine, bar number 10 out there. So gold looking pretty good as we speak right now. That's at 137 in the afternoon. Well, if gold is doing good, the question should be, and I know Peter's other question, but the question should be, oh, how's the XAU doing, Steve-O? And if we take a look at the XAU, we'll know by day's end. But it's got a nice bullish reversal signal right now. But gosh darn it, it hasn't taken out Stevie's red line, which is basically at 68.61. We're trading at 68.61. So is it a top or not? Um... It's possible, but it's risky. You'd really like to see, right, the miners outperform gold when they make a bottom. You'd just like to see price take out resistance, and that would be on the weekly level out here. So I, I have to send up the flag that says you still got to be careful out there. And that's the, that's the message coming from... That's the message coming from the XAU, which I think is a really reliable underlying message with regard to the miners. Now, look, GDX is trading up 60 cents right now, trading out at 2088. And similar to like the uh, GBTC and Bitcoin, uh, the GDX is not following exactly the XAU. It's not intended to. Uh, here you've got a nice bullish message, so to speak. Um, I'm going with the XAU. I'm going to hold out the way to see if the XAU can close above Stevie's red line, which I believe is green. No, it was red, the XAU. Hope you're ready. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. 
If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Well, welcome back, uh, folks. Just to uh, finish off gold, because I know Peter was interested in taking a look at this chart here. It shows that gold is moving higher in all major currencies out there. Uh, Peter's other question was about the advanced decline oscillator line for the New York Stock Exchange. As we peek in on that, and uh, Peter's paying attention to the minus 150 level, we are at minus 192.89. When you get to minus 150 or below, you're getting into the oversold reading area. Now, bottoms can form here in two different ways. For example, if you take a look at the bottom that formed back on December the 24th out there, um, and I'm looking at a closing basis, by the way, you can see it was just simply a slingshot move off of the really minor, uh, off of the really uh, severe oversold reading, which was minus 318.16, says to really be on guard out there. The other way that the markets will form, so, so you get an oversold bounce, or bottom, uh, which occurred here, uh, when you get down into these levels, you can also get a series of what we'll say are higher lows of that advanced decline oscillator reading while we get lower lows in price on a closing basis, and that will also set the hook to the upside. So it's worth watching here, Peter, uh, certainly over the next many days to see what, if any kind of bottom signals form inside that advanced decline oscillator reading. Uh, there was a question earlier about treasury bonds. What is my take on treasury bonds? Uh, I'm going to give you the short-term take out here. I apologize. It, it vanished from my screen, whoever asked, but, but that's okay. And I should remember, but it, it, I, the reason why I'm going to put up the 30-minute time frame chart out here is because it's uh, done a rather good job of helping to identify uh, short-term tops and bottoms out here. It hasn't worked all the time, but we have talked about the uh, nine count out here. If you take a look at this bottom back here at 1,700 hours, this is back on May 8th. That most certainly identified a bottom and was worthwhile to pay attention to. If we take a look at this morning right here at 12 noon, what took place? Well, what took place is we had the TD set up nine count top. Now it would appear that prices 
going to pull back. Pull back to where? Well, it's got support at this uh, low from the uh, at right here at about 8:30 this morning. So that's what I would be looking for when it comes to uh, T bonds out here, at least on a short term basis. What else is it that we're going to look at? I don't know because I don't have any other questions out here. Let me just take a, a quick peek. So if you're in the den, fire away, please. And I'm happy to do that. And if you're not in the den and you're just listening in and you want, get that email in quickly because, uh, you know, it's liable. You're liable to write it and I won't get it till after the show or something along those lines out there. So what else should we look at? That's really the good question here. Uh, what should we look at? We should uh, look at when we look at some individual stocks that are moving. How about some of the weighted stocks inside the NDX 100? So Apple would be the first one up. So if we're going to do that, let's go take a look at Apple. Let me uh, see if I can get my other charts fired up. But while we're waiting on that, let me close this out here. Close that page. But let's come take a look at the three time frames for Apple, AAPL is a ticker symbol. When I say three time frames, of course, referring to their market profiles. Below the uh, daily market profile, well below that. Now below the weekly. <coughs> of course, week doesn't end, but that's 187.65. Now below the monthly top of its box out there, that's 187.74. So this week you're watching 187.65 out there. If price stays below that, then what we're looking at is a pullback to about the 169 area. That's at the center of the box or point of control on the monthly time frame. That's what's going on in Apple. We go take a look at Google, G-O-O-G, -O -O or Goof, uh, if you are a typist like I am, uh, or good. Let's try G O O G, Steve. Oh, really? Come on. That third time was the charm. Price below the daily, price below the weekly, uh, price pulling back to 1101.84, the top of the monthly profile. How about Microsoft out here? Taking a look to see what kind of damage in the top uh, five issues. Right now, price is below a brand new daily profile. Watch that level. That's 124.28. You got a brand new weekly profile out here, and price is just testing the top of that box, 123.45. So Microsoft, of all the issues out here, from a market profile standpoint, is uh, looking pretty good. Uh, but the question is, will the current bottom of the box continue to act as resistance 124 and 28 pennies out there? And that's simply because price is pulling back to test the top of its weekly profile. Facebook, let's go take a look at Facebook. What is Facebook doing out here? Facebook uh, looking really quite uh, good on a daily standpoint. Simply from the standpoint, it's trading within its box out here. The bottom of the box, the support level, or one support level, 179.45. The second support level out here is the center line of that box, and that's at 181.57. You're trading at 182 right now. So Facebook uh, looks pretty decent from a daily time frame. The weekly time frame also forming a brand new profile. Tra tra price is trading just below the top of that 182.80. And the monthly time frame trading with inside the box. So I will be watching 179.45 inside of Facebook if that level holds. And there's some other type of bottom that forms. All is good. If it fails, 174.96, the bottom of that weekly profile would be in order. We take a look at uh, Lightsweet Crew. What did it do? What is it doing? What has it done? It's trading at 60.86 or so if I put up. If I put up, I don't know why I've got a difference out here, maybe because I have so many things running in operation, but here's one of the things you and I can look at with regard to light, sweet, crude. Here's what we know. We know that what Price did today was tested Stevie's green line. That's at 63.17, and that is now resistance. This suggests to you and I that with regard to light, sweet, crude, it's headed back to the low here from March 28th. I've got that low being... 5834. Looks like that is where Light Sweet Gold, Texas T, is headed to. All right, we looked at a bunch of issues. We didn't look at Intel. Let's go take a look at Intel out here. INTC is the uh, ticker symbol. Uh, okay, so we want to look at INTC when it comes to the other sets of charts. The reason is because we're below daily, we're below weekly, we're well below those, and it looks like we're headed to 4360, the bottom of that monthly profile. You're at 4495. If I put over the daily time frame chart using Stevie's other system, we can see that TD set up nine count 
out there that identified a high. If we just simply do a wave count down from that bar, we're only in wave number two. We don't see any other bottoming signals on the daily time frame for Intel. Doesn't mean it can't bottom, it just means the patterns that you and I use out there are not present. We can see on a weekly basis that uh, price is moving back into levels of support that were previously bottoms, right? You can see a bull sash candle the week of October 26, December 28, the piercing camel hammer candle, January the 4th out there. So that really would be your line of demarcation. What I mean by that is if you see it close below 42.36, it's curtains. There's no more floors, no more levels of support. It says you could pull all the way back to 33 bucks and change out there. That is the message of Intel. And on the monthly time frame chart, it's got basically the worst pattern you can have. It's got that topping pattern. The Rose Momentum Indicator top. Price moving higher. Doing less route of energy. Generating a bearish reversal candle. Trading below Stevie's green line. Still have to try one of those uh, green green egg machines out there. Ah, too much. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. It's amazing to think that Tom O'Brien started his weekly gold report 17 years ago with the first issue published April 7th, 2002, when gold was trading at under $300 per ounce. Gold peaked at more than $1,900 in 2011, and after spending many years consolidating at lower prices, gold may be poised for its next big run. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. As of April 1st of this year, the Gold Report currently has eight active positions with an average unrealized profit of almost 8% for each open trade. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your Gold Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Don't let gold's next big run pass you by. Sign up today. You know what's cool? Taking something that's good for you. Something specifically formulated to help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Nico, our hunter and gatherer ancestors found all their nutritional requirements for health in their wild environment. But today, our food sources no longer contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients our bodies need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionic, soil-based vitamins, minerals, fatty, and amino acids in an easy-to-use liquid form. Primal Edge is powered by highly concentrated folic and humic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They have been called miracle molecules because, like sunlight, air, and water, life cannot exist without them. That's right, Paige. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every, every morning. morning. Primal Edge, formulated and approved by Nico and Paige of Living a Primal Lifestyle. Buy it today for just $89. Click on the Primal Edge banner on the front page of TFNN.com. This is David White. Stay tuned because coming up next is the Power Trading Hour right here on TFNN.
Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow's off 641, S&P 71, and the X100 off 250. So a bit off of the uh, lows uh, during the show out here when we began the program. What does it mean? Uh, well, go back to the first questions that came in. We just simply take a look at the ES Mini on a 30-minute basis. Again, we did not see any kind of bottoming signal. Wave number six uh, out of potentially seven out there being in letter F. And so far, this has just been a little counter-trend rally out there as prices come up in tested Stevie's red line. That's at 28, call it 2814 out here. Now, if price is able to close above 2814, um, then its next level of resistance, not too much higher, it would be the bar from 1230. That is 281775, call it 2818. So you got 2814, 2818. If you clear 2818 out there, then you've got a further counter trend rally to a go. But right now, uh, watch that 2814 level. It's just two points away from where we're trading, but that's going to be a key area because if you can get a rising price oscillator, even though it's below zero, it says you can have more. You got you look for additional, excuse me, resistance points out there. NQ, same story, I believe. Let's go take a look at the NQ. Prove it, Stevo. Our uh, price right now trading right into or just a tad above Stevie's red line. No bottoming signals there from a count I got to wave number um, eight out there. We don't do eight counts. Um, so right now in its resistance level, Stevie's red line, I can't give you the number. Not that I don't want to. I do. It's like around 75, 73.50, 73.51. 73.51. We're just watching it live. So uh, four minutes uh, right now. Price here too, uh, trading bouncing just really right up into resistance. So just be careful out there. Those are the numbers to be watching uh, today. So folks, thanks so much for being here. Stay tuned, please. Your favorite polar bear, David White. He's up next. Uh, open up a Coca-Cola with him if you would, and then uh, stay tuned for the Tom O'Brien show, three to uh, five today. And especially tune in tomorrow on Terrific Tuesday at 1 o'clock. I'll see you next. Take care.